Hello everyone, welcome in Learn CHE. Today we are going to discuss about Reynolds experiment and Reynolds number. In Reynolds experiment, we are going to see that what is Reynolds apparatus. Reynolds apparatus is all about. Then we will see the experiment. Then what observation Reynolds observe. Then when finally come into the conclusion, right? Then we will discuss about the what is Reynolds number, definition of Reynolds number, types of flow on the basis of Reynolds number value then we will discuss about the critical velocity and critical Reynolds number then we are finally discuss about the significance of Reynolds number. So before I start my lecture there is a question for you all. First question is which of the following fluid has a higher viscosity? Here are four options. The first option is water. The second option is mercury, the third one is honey and the fourth one is kerosene. And the second question is what is the CGS unit of viscosity, right? The first option is centipoise, the second option is poise, the third option is pascal and the fourth option is newton second per meter. Okay. Now let's start with our lecture that is Reynolds experiment. So this is the apparatus for Reynolds experiment and here you will see that this is a constant head tank okay this one red one and why this is constant head tank because because when the water flow into the glass tube okay this is a glass tube right so when water flow in this glass tube then this head okay this head is going to constant and we can say that the head of water is going to constant that's why we say that this is a constant head tank or we can also say the larger tank and here is my second tank that is a small one and in this tank there is a die and we can also say this is a die container and now this is a glass tube and this black one this you are seeing that black one this is a filament of die okay the die which is here and here is a regulating wall which regulate the flow of water and here is a, another wall which regulate the flow of dye. Now you will see here there is a water in this glass tube. First of all what we do so this is a Reynolds apparatus right now now before starting the experiment what we do we keep this fluid like the water in the glass tube we keep this at a steady state and we leave it for a some time to keep it a or to attain a steady state okay after the steady state when it attain then what we do just see here we open this wall slowly slowly right we open this wall and we also open this wall as well right then what happens that this the dye right the dye flow from here dye flow from here the dye flow from here right so and comes in contact with water okay and we can say in the glass tube right then what happens when we increase the velocity right so we not observe that as we increase or decrease the velocity then what happens and what is happening with the flow pattern that is all about the Reynolds experiment okay this is my regulating wall so I'll slowly slowly open my regulating wall and I'll observe the I'll observe the pattern of flow okay what is happening here with the dye in between dye and water that is the main aim of Reynolds experiment so what the observation which Reynolds observed or noted down Okay, so I we will just see that the first observation which Reynolds observed that is when the velocity was low. As I said that initially we just start our regulating wall, right? Then if then a fine filament of dye was carried out by the flowing water in a straight line and the dye filament was moved at a straight line path. What happens that suppose this is my this is this is what is this this is a glass tube and in this glass tube there is a water is flowing right this is a water which is flowing and 
when the velocity is low then what is happening that this is a filament of die okay this one so it will be straight okay it will follow the straight line path or we can say that it will flow in a it will be parallel it will follow the parallel layer as well as straight line path okay it will not mix with water that's why we not say that this state is called as the laminar flow why because here are no waviness no irregularity no mixing is involved that's why this process is called or this type of flow is known as the laminar flow right so as we increase the velocity in the second step as we increase the velocity here you will see that by the regulating wall as we increase the velocity then what happens what happens with the filament of tube filament of die right then what happens that the die filament becomes wavy and irregular okay now it does not maintain the straight line path as earlier it was following a straight line path and this path is known as the transitional state and we can say the transitional flow and in this flow the die will follow this path right and there is a water is flowing like that okay why because as we increase the velocity then the motion increased motion increase of what the die motion is increased and it becomes the irregular and wavy right and when we further increase the what velocity if we further increase the velocity by regulating ball then what will happens that the waviness and irregularity will become high of the die filament and it will finally diffuse into the water die will completely we can say or it will finally diffuse into the water then in the earlier case what we see that it was something like that in a laminar flow then it become the wavy now it will diffuse into the water like that okay now it is not a regular flow or not a steady flow then this type of flow is known as the turbulent flow as we increase the velocity so this is the observation which Reynolds observed and he noted down on the basis of that he introduced a number that number is known as the Reynolds number now we will discuss about the Reynolds number so this is a Reynolds number and i hope you have understood what is Reynolds experiment so what is Reynolds number is all about Reynolds number tell us about the laminar flow transitional flow and turbulent flow which we see in the experiment okay so first we will see what is Reynolds number so Reynolds number so Reynolds number is a dimensionless number it does not have any unit and it is the ratio of inertia force to viscous force and if we write mathematically so what can we write first it is denoted by an re and what is the inertia force okay what is the inertia force inertia force is mass into acceleration so I, I can simply write here m into a then what is the viscous force viscous force is simply I can write here mu du by dy into area so du by dy is written as a v by l okay then you will find here the inertia force will be rho l square v square and viscous force will be mu v l okay when I'll just simply cut this one and this one then I'll get the rho l v by mu right so this is a dynamic viscosity l is a length v is a mean velocity and mu is a viscosity so when we discuss about the pipe flow okay when the fluid is flowing in a pipe then l is taken as a diameter of the pipe and Reynolds number for the pipe flow is d v by mu simply l is replaced by the d d is a diameter of the pipe okay note it down now here are three you can say the simply numbers numbers for or Reynolds number for the piping piping flow so the values of Reynolds number I have written here and the types of flow through pipes the first one is when Reynolds number is less than 2000 then it will be laminar flow okay when the Reynolds number lies between 2000 to 4000 then it will be then it will be transitional when the Reynolds number is higher than 4000 then it will become a turbulent flow and the and here will be turbulence 
right most of the cases this laminar flow is a ideal condition and we can say that in engineering practice we do not see mainly laminar flow right and laminar flow is also a very viscous flow we will see this later as well so i think it is also clear you, to you now note it what i i have noted down here with my this definition we can simply say that at low Reynolds number, at low Reynolds number, what will happen? What will happen that simply we can see that at low Reynolds number, okay? As the this Reynolds number is less than what will happen? Then viscous force will be high and we can say that the fluid will have a higher viscosity. That's why I said that laminar flow is a viscous flow. So at lower Reynolds number, vis viscous flow will be high and we can also say that for laminar flow viscosity should be high of the fluid and at higher Reynolds number the inertia force is more the flow is turbulent so you can simply say here as the Reynolds as the inertia force will increase so Reynolds number will definitely increase now for laminar flow okay I think you have understood what is laminar flow okay so for laminar flow the loss of pressure head in pipe we discuss we define or we calculate the loss of uh, pressure head loss of pressure head while solving the problems in fluid mechanics and Reynolds number play a very important role there as well okay so what is saying that the, the loss of pressure head in pipe is less and proportional to the velocity why because in laminar flow this is a viscous in nature the energy loss or we can say the loss of pressure head is less okay and at the same time it is proportional to the velocity okay and in in the second case for a for a turbulent flow the loss of pressure head the loss of pressure head is is denoted by the delta p okay and written as a p2 minus p1 is large why because here is a turbulence if the turbulence is high then simply the energy will lose or energy will lost right and it is proportional v2 power n and this n is based and is mainly varied to 1.75 to 2.0 maybe someone can ask you about the value of n so this is all about the Reynolds number now we will discuss about the significance of Reynolds number we have we have learned about the Reynolds experiment what is Reynolds experiment is all about then the observation Reynolds number the types of flow basis of Reynolds number now what is the significance why we use the Reynolds number so I have already told you many things about the Reynolds number the first significance of Reynolds number is that it gives us the information about the types of flow that is most important thing through a pipe as it is laminar flow transitional flow and turbulent flow okay suppose if you are dealing with fluid mechanics problem and you do not know that which type of flow you are dealing okay so Reynolds number will help you to find out the types of flow which is flowing in a pipe now the second significance is that it helps us to solve the problems in fluid mechanics mainly to define or to calculate the head loss and other problems as well in the fluid mechanics it is a very important term in the piping system the third one is if the value of Reynolds number is less than 2000 then the flow will be laminar I have already told you the fourth significance is that when the Reynolds number value lies between 2000 to 4000 then the value then the flow becomes transitional flow and if Reynolds number value becomes more than 4000 then the type of flow will be turbulent got it now as we are discussing about the Reynolds number so this term is also very very important critical velocity what is that it is the velocity of fluid at which flow changes flow changes from laminar flow to turbulent flow okay as we increase the velocity we see in the experiment as we increase the velocity then the flow changes flow changes from laminar to transition first then transition to turbulent okay so at which velocity this is changing it's called the critical velocity from laminar to turbulent flow okay so critical velocity can be lower critical velocity and upper critical velocity 
right so what is lower critical velocity lower critical velocity is the velocity at which flow enters from laminar to transitional period is called the lower critical velocity flow enters from laminar flow to transitional flow then i will say that this velocity is a lower critical velocity and suppose if you are solving some problem and you have given the lower critical velocity then you can just simply see that at this velocity the flow will be changing from laminar to transitional right then the second velocity is upper critical velocity what is that velocity the velocity at which flow enters from the transition period to turbulent okay Transi this is an important thing transition period to turbulent and is called the upper critical velocity got it this point this point is also we can observe this point when we are discussing about the observation observed by the Reynolds and this is a the velocity at which and that is a upper critical velocity now as we have discussed about the critical velocity now we can also define the critical Reynolds number this is also one of the most important thing when whenever we like we, whenever we are solving some problems and we are giving some examination so this is a also very important term and here are also two critical Reynolds number the first one is lower critical Reynolds number and the second one is a upper critical Reynolds number right so lower critical what is lower critical Reynolds number it is that value of Reynolds number it is basis on the first Reynolds number okay below which fluid will remain as a laminar flow okay so that is a lower critical Reynolds so the lower critical Reynolds number is less than 2000 simply if the value of Reynolds number is less than 2000 then we simply say that it is a lower critical Reynolds number then what will be the upper critical Reynolds number it is that value of Reynolds number above which the flow will always be turbulent for a piping system we are discussing here about the piping system and we can define Reynolds number for the other system as well okay now please let me in the comments box what will be the Reynolds number for the upper critical Reynolds so here we discussed about the Reynolds experiment then we discuss about the observations by Reynolds okay and after that we see that what is the experiment of Reynolds then we discuss about the Reynolds number definition of Reynolds number types of flow on the basis of Reynolds number then we see about the critical velocity critical Reynolds number okay so what is the conclusion what is the what is all about why we why we are discussing about the Reynolds experiment simply we can say that it gives us a important information about the types of flow on the basis of Reynolds number the first and we can say that the value of Reynolds number okay the second thing is that whenever we are dealing some problems or, or suppose if we are dealing with some fluid mechanics problem then Reynolds number can give us a very important information about the types of flow okay that is all about the this video where we discussed about the these all which I have written Reynolds experiment Reynolds number types of flow critical velocity and critical Reynolds number so that's all for the this video if you haven't subscribed our channel so you can subscribe our channel for more interesting videos of chemical engineering and if you have any doubt in any subjects any topic you can let me in the comments box and if you haven't joined any social media of the learn CHC so you can join there and to ask your query so this is the social media handle where you can join and ask your query so thank you for watching